What should we do? This is a question that the people are asking John the Baptist. What should we do? If you have an extra cloak, if you have extra, give to those who do not have. What should we do? Well, if you have a position of power, don't use it against people. Use it for others. Don't extort, don't steal. Don't be a false witness here. What should we do? So the simple answer is that John the Baptist gave. I think there's deeper questions in our own hearts, not just what action should we have. What should we do in the spiritual life? What should we do? St. Paul gives us a great answer. He says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. It's a great line, a great way to really sit here and be prepared for Christmas to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. I, <clears throat> you're I shall say it again, rejoice. And that's great. It's a great line. Except for that one word that's in here. Always. It's hard to rejoice always. It's easy to rejoice when your team wins the big game. It's great to rejoice when there's great things going on in your life. You're accepting a new child. You're, you're having some great things going on. You have a great celebration for Christmas. You have all kinds of family around, and everything is great and wonderful. And it's easy to rejoice. There's also those dark times of our life, those dark valleys, those trials, those tribulations, where we don't want to rejoice, where it's very difficult to rejoice. The loss of a loved one, the argument with a neighbor, the family comes together and it all falls apart into arguments about what recipe to use. You don't feel like rejoicing anymore. But that's not what St. Paul says. St. Paul says, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. What should we do when we're angry, when we feel like we've been betrayed, when we have a loss in our life?
Paul says, the Lord is near, have no anxiety. Pray, don't worry. And then St. Paul concludes with this very beautiful thing to remind us why we should do this. Why we should not pull ourselves up with anxiety that the Lord is near. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Let the Lord be so near that he guards your heart and mind. And he keeps you in peace in the storms of life. Storms of life are going to come and they're going to go and they're going to be around. But be so close to the Lord. Invite the Lord to be so near to you that He guards your heart and your mind. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. that into the great sense of Christmas, the, the, the incarnation of Jesus who walks around the earth <coughs> who lives with us. It's the wonder and beauty of Christmas is the incarnation, God with us. Know that he's so close to you that he wants to guard your heart and your mind. What should we do is the question that was asked of John the Baptist. Repent, walk away from sin. What should we do? St. Paul's answer is to know that the Lord is near. Let him guard your heart. Have peace in that heart. To know that the Father loves you. That he's in control. Not you, not no one else. Let the Lord guard your heart.